welcome to the National Science Week documentary series From Research to Reality. I'm Jeff Garrett, Queensland Chief Scientist. Last week we were introduced to the concept of the business life cycle, the various phases through which many businesses track. Our two companies are at different stages in their business development. Let's have a quick look at the typical stages in a common business life cycle. Stage one is all about assessing the opportunity. Where's the business out there? In stage two, it's time to get out and start the business. Stage three is all about growing and becoming profitable. By stage four, the business might have matured and become more routine. But then stage five, the business is serious, seriously looking about expanding. Later stages six and seven are typically an either or. Either there's a decline that threatens the firm's ongoing viability, which can happen slowly, or a very sudden bust. Or there's an opportunity for a company to transform into the next phase. And you can either cash out, and let someone else to develop this opportunity, or do so yourself. This week, we're gonna join another innovative, relatively young Queensland company, already in the second expansion phase, typically stage five in our life cycle model. Brisbane-based Ground Probe is an example of a company with a unique product serving the mining industry that has seen it earn tens of millions of dollars in profitable revenues in just seven years. Ground Probe has decided to expand even faster, creating a variation of its original product to address additional opportunities in its existing markets. Rowan Gilmore, CEO of the Australian Institute of Commercialisation, caught up with the Ground Probe team to hear their story. Ground Probe is a highly innovative and dynamic company that supplies its unique measurement systems and services to the international mining and civil infrastructure industries. I'm here at a local quarry where the Ground Probe team are about to show me the capabilities of their new product called WAM, or Work Area Monitor. Its slope stability technology has improved safety on mining sites around the world and works by detecting potential wall collapses with sufficient warning to enable mine sites to be evacuated before the wall falls in. G'day Rowan. G'day Lucky. This is the WAM here, I guess. Yes, it is. Now, Ground Probe's expanding into new products such as the WAM. What, what's, what problem is the WAM trying to solve? Well, Rowan, it's trying to solve a very particular problem. When miners are working underneath high slopes and walls in quarries and in mines, they're at a risk of rocks falling down and causing them or machinery some pretty bad injury. So what we do is we have the WAM. It, uh, it looks at a wall. It measures if there's any movement down to a millimetre or less, and then it can alert the people in the area to let them know if the, if the area is safe or unsafe. Right, and, and how did the original idea arise? Well, it came out because we, we had a, a first product was the SSR, which we used to scan entire mine areas. But we found that the people who are working underneath the actual slope are the ones who are at the greatest risk of consequence if there is a, uh, a rock fall. So we've tailored a product just for them. It's a great outcome when we see university research transform into real products that people buy and use. Glenn Stickley, one of the original founders of the company, talks about what motivated him to start Ground Pro. Glenn, what, what motivated you to start Ground Probe in the first place? For many years we've been working on research that should have been able to help the mining industry. And with the Slopes Really Radar, we had a product that could really benefit the industry. And we also felt that the industry would be willing to pay for it. So we thought there was a good opportunity to start a company. And how did you feel about leaving the university environment to go into a brand new startup company? Well, obviously I was a bit nervous. But you have to remember as a researcher at the university, I was on short-term contracts. Uh, there's always a chance that the funding would run out. So going into private industry with an idea that provided a workable solution to a major problem in a major industry seemed like a really good idea. Ground Probe's initial product idea, the ground penetrating radar, didn't get too far before it was decided that there would be more demand if they commercialised a slightly different technology, the slope stability radar, and they were proved right. When we were still at the university, that was what we thought would be our commercial success. But with the technology crash around 2000, um, the market for that dissipated. The Slopes Philly Radar was a great product and we'd underestimated the market and we realised that its market potential was huge. So that formed the basis of Ground Probe. Right. 
So is it correct in saying that the slope stability radar is mainly used in, in the mining industry or is it also used in other civil or environmental situations that have similar problems? Yeah, the, uh, the slope stability radar is primarily used in open cut mining. That's our main vertical market. However, there have been a number of examples where we have used it in other industries. So a particular example is at the Yosemite National Park in the uh, United States where they had uh, a large failure where there was a rock slide that covered the main entry road into the park. Our slope stability radar was deployed and was used to ensure that the system, uh, the slope was safe and then it supported a lot of the cleanup activities so that the guys doing the cleanup knew that the area was safe. When we first came up with the slope stability radar, there was nothing out there, so it was a revolution in the industry and it was well accepted. In the first two or three years, we had to prove the concept of this technology, and today it's adopted as best practice. Now that it is best practice, there are other companies out there that provide similar solutions, and there are other technologies and tools used for, um, for monitoring slope movements. Moving into new markets requires similar levels of planning and research to starting from scratch, especially if it involves a major expansion for the company. Duncan Stovall, the marketing and product manager for Ground Probe explained the skills needed for effective marketing. So we have uh, basically three pillars on our team. We have a marketing team, which is responsible for the overall corporate marketing, branding, introducing uh, all of the sort of market messages that we take forth. We also then have the product management team. They're taking a lot of that sort of intelligence and market research that's been undertaken by the marketing team and then work to identify market offerings, building business cases and validating with customers in the market that there is actually a need for that product or service. They then support the product development team through its life cycle until it's actually produced as a product and then supporting the sales and operations teams to make sure that the product excels and also that we support it in the right way. Mm -hmm.